Howdy. My name is Joshua Stamper, and I'm the Division Director of the Pesticide and Fertilizer Management Division within the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Dicamba is an important tool in combating herbicide-resistant weeds and dicamba-tolerant soybeans, and the Minnesota Department of Agriculture wishes to preserve this tool for Minnesota farmers. However, the continued registration of dicamba products labeled for this use is dependent on growers being able to use these products without impacts on their neighbors' homes, farms, gardens, and other nearby sensitive vegetation. This training will help you legally use the three restricted use dicamba products that are labeled for post-emergent weed control on dicamba tolerant soybeans in the state of Minnesota. This will help you comply with the label and to keep your use of dicamba from damaging your neighbor's home, garden, or farm crop. Nothing in this training supersedes the label. The MDA has received over 500 reports of dicamba damage in the last four years. Most, but not all, of these complaints came from other farmers who had their non-dicamba tolerant soybeans damaged by the off-site movement of dicamba. Dicamba is a powerful tool that demands responsible use. That responsible use is clearly laid out on the pesticide label. The label is the law. Failing to follow any part of the pesticide label is a violation of the law. Not knowing is not an excuse. Misusing pesticides exposes you to financial and legal liability. It is your responsibility to make sure that you follow the label. The three dicamba labels for Extendamax, Ingenia, and Tavium are unique complicated and require you to provide detailed information to prove that you are in compliance. This means compliance with the label can only be proven by complete and accurate record keeping that is required on the label. Record keeping is your opportunity to prove that you did everything correctly. This record keeping requirement must be completed within 72 hours of the application and should include all of the following items. We're going to walk you through what our expectations are for meeting some of these specific record keeping requirements so that if in the event that you have a misuse complaint, you know what we are looking for and our expectations about following the label completely. The location, date, and timing of every application must include the start and end times of the application. Applications of these products can begin one hour after sunrise, but must be concluded two hours before sunset to avoid temperature inversions. If you farm in the central sands of Minnesota or in northwestern Minnesota, the MDA has collaborated with the North Dakota Agricultural Weather Network or Endon to offer the Endon Inversion Smartphone application that provides temperature alerts based off of locally cited agricultural weather stations. Different dicamba products have different application cutoffs based on the growth stage. Tavium cannot be used after V4. Extendamax cannot be used after R1. None of these products can be used after June 30th. Boom height wind speed and the direction must be recorded in your record keeping. You must have an anemometer which measures the wind speed at boom height in your possession during, at the time of an inspection to prove that you actually measured the wind speed at the boom height per the label. Field Watch is Minnesota's sensitive crop registry and it must be consulted per the label. You also need to talk to your neighbors about your intended use of these dicamba products now. You can head off conflict and complaints early by talking to your neighbors about making sure that your use of herbicide technology is in agreement with theirs. 
Buffers are a requirement of the label, and the best way to demonstrate compliance is to draw a map as part of your application record showing where you left a buffer. Record of training is mandatory and you'll be asked for your record of attendance at this training and we will verify this with the registrant that provided the training. Keep the certificate from this training with your application records. These dicamber products that are labeled for post-emergent weed control in soybeans require a valid license or private applicator certification. Volatility and drift reducing agents are mandatory and the applicator must provide proof of purchase to include with the record keeping. Tank mix partners and all of the application rates must be a part of your application record. Records of application must be completely filled out within 72 hours of the application. Private applicators must keep these records for two years. Commercial applicators must keep these records for five years. If the MDA is conducting an investigation and you do not have these application records readily available, we will issue an order for the submission of your records. Failure to comply with this order and submit the application records in the provided timeline will result in a financial penalty. Any violation of a dicamba product label from an MDA misuse investigation or a routine inspection has the potential to lead to a financial penalty. Penalties can range from hundreds into thousands of dollars. Providing false information on a record or refusing to cooperate during an investigation is a serious separate violation that will be addressed with a financial penalty. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture reviews applicator and applicator employer history. Repeat violations will result in increased penalties. The future registration status of dicamba as a post-emergent herbicide for soybeans in Minnesota is dependent on proper use. If you suspect that your home or crop has been impacted by pesticide drift from any chemical and you have questions about submitting a complaint to the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, please see these below resources. The Minnesota Department of Agriculture wishes you a productive and profitable 2021 growing season. Thank you.